The Orlando Magic made a statement Friday afternoon. A statement that this team is here to play. But why that's not the statement the Magic actually made. We'll get to everything after a big win over the Boston Celtics. First place in the in Group C. We'll get to all that today on Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic. Your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Locked on Magic, today is November 24th, 2023. It may be November 25th, 2023 by the other time you listen to this. My name is Phil Prosser-Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked on Magic, the Orlando Magic with a humongous win over the Boston Celtics. A statement made to the rest of the league, but why it's the statement they made to each other that mattered so much more. We're going to dive into every aspect of this game. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On And the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Look, um, we knew this was a big game. You know, uh, we can say whatever we want to say about it. We can can say, well, should, should we make a big deal out of this or not? We knew the moment the schedule came out in August that this was a big game. We pointed to this game. We said, this game is special. Bring the energy. Bring the noise. It's in-season tournament. It's a 2.30 p.m. on Black Friday. We knew this game was big. It did not matter what the Magic's record was. It did not matter about anything else. The Boston Celtics are a rival. You know, maybe in the way that, you know, that Michigan State thinks Michigan's a rival sometimes, but... The Boston Celtics are a rival. We closed the Boston Garden. We beat them in 09. They beat us in 10. This is a rivalry game of sorts. And certainly it is because there are a lot of transplants in the city. We're not going to deny that. The fact that the Magic were playing so well on a five-game winning streak, 10 and 5, now 11 and 5, obviously, because they won. um, It felt entering this game, too, not only was it big because It mattered for the in-season tournament, not just because it did have the trappings of a national TV game with NBA TV sending their, one of their top broadcasting groups, the Spiro Didis, Grant Hill, Greg Anthony, and Dennis Scott in the building, uh, which NBA TV does not always do for their nationally televised games. That's why we often don't count them, but this one was, this was a big game. Um, And it just felt special and it felt big and it felt affirming as much as anything else. Because this Magic team is still proving itself. No one around the league knows who the Magic are. I mean, I'm watching Heat Knicks a little bit right now. They talked a little bit about the Celtics as they were getting ready for next Friday's games on ESPN. And they you know, they talked about the Magic. You don't get to be one of the best teams in the league or you don't get to be a team of national importance and relevance until you earn it on the court and... These are the kind of games, and this is more respect to Boston and what they've accomplished and who they are and what they're building. This was a game of earning respect. Beating the Nuggets, beating the Celtics, beating the Bucks. The Magic have done all that in this first month of the season. These are the kinds of wins the Magic had to find. The kind of wins the Magic needed to make everyone believe what this team knows already. And that's really the statement that mattered more. But still, this week at the Amway Center was all about making you believe. Making everyone externally believe. That's not the goal the team had, but that is the effect of what they did. And look, Orlando easily could have lost this game. 
Orlando looked sloppy with eight turnovers in the first quarter. They had a terrible finish to the second quarter. Ending quarters is a big deal, and, and I even noted it during the game, that the way they ended that second quarter and some of the decisions they made trying to go for a knockout blow are all decisions that are going to cost you when you're playing in a playoff game. And I guess what? Let's start thinking, let's start talking seriously about what an Orlando Magic playoff series looks like. This team, frankly, is still at a stage where they don't know what they don't know. And this is the kind of game that a young team folds, falls apart. We've seen that plenty of times already this season. When the Magic gave up a 16-point lead to the Chicago, you know, gave up two 16-point leads to the Chicago Bulls and had to win on the last possession of the game. We have seen this team take its lumps. And each time come back stronger. And that was the case in this one. This team has a poise and confidence about it that young teams don't have. So what? They're down eight at halftime. They closed the second quarter really poor. They got back in the locker room and something they haven't always done this year. They regrouped, got together, said, this is what we have to do. And then they did it. Quite simply, like it's one thing to talk and say we need to do X, Y, and Z. It is another thing against one of the top teams in the league, maybe the best team in the league to start the season. And yeah, I know Boston's struggling a little bit right now, but against one of the top teams in the entire league, the Magic imposed their will. Orlando outscored Boston 65 to 40 in the second half. Remember, this is one of the, this was one of the worst second half teams in the league. They went on a 17-0 run to put this to, to take the lead and begin to put their grips on it. They were as disruptive and strong defensively, buying into their identity and who they are as they continue to grow and develop. They did this in response to how poorly they or how I don't want to say uninspired, I don't want to say poorly, but how how much they struggled with this Celtics team in the first half. And yeah, I will grant, Drew Holiday didn't play. I will grant, Kristaps Porzingis went out in the first half. I will grant you that. But the jersey still says Celtics. That team still is very good and very capable of winning and, and, and took, took some bites out of the magic a little bit in that second half nonetheless. And yet, Orlando kept their cool. There were a few technical fouls here and there along the way. The, the officials were not the, the cleanest. But Orlando kept making play after play after play. They kept doing the simple things they have to do. And that, they kept being themselves, to be perfectly honest. You know, uh, Joe Mazzulla said after the game about Mo Wagner, who had 13 of his 27 points in the fourth quarter, like he only made one three. It wasn't like he was hot. He had putbacks, got to the foul line. He did all the little scrappy things that Mo Wagner does. But the Magic set him up over and over again. They got in the paint. They broke that defense down. They got past their man. They targeted the mismatch they wanted, specific, specifically on Luke Cornett. And the Magic are increasingly becoming a team that you can't just simply switch and keep on the perimeter. Once they figure it out, maybe it takes them a while to, to recognize the defense and, and, and what they have to do. This team is beating you. They're, def they're defending so well that it doesn't matter if they're super efficient offensively. As long as they're not turning the ball over, they're going to find a way. They're going to figure it out. They're going to learn most importantly. And that's the statement the Magic made Friday afternoon. The statement they made repeatedly is, we are not a pushover team. We are not a flash in the pan. We are here. You're going to have to deal with us because we're putting the pressure on you and getting into you and disrupting what you're going to do offensively. We are committed to who we are and to each other. And we are very capable of winning at all layers and levels. I am a big believer that you do change your expectations as the season goes on, as the team reveals itself to you. 
This Magic team, this is not just this is not a team fighting for playoff scraps. This is a team that announced itself in the win over Denver, in the win today against Boston, that they can compete. Now, can they compete in a seven-game series? We're going to find that out. But that's the point. We are going to find that out if this team stays committed to what they are doing. This was a statement game. A game where the fans wanted as much as the players. This whole week, the fans, the Amway Center crowd has been bought in. This whole season, the Amway Center crowd has been bought in and ready to come along on this ride. Everybody should believe now. And now the Magic just have to keep growing and growing from it. Because, you know, this isn't just a one-game thing. This is the product of a long process. So while we can say all the things the Magic told the rest of the world, what the Magic told us after the game is what they told each other. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Game Time. Look, the Orlando Magic still have three more games left on this homestand. They're 3-0 and on this homestand with Charlotte and two games against Washington coming up. A 6-0 and homestand and potentially a nine-game winning streak. I don't want to get too far ahead. Those are good teams, but this, this could get real spicy. Um, Orlando, I don't think, has ever had a 10-game winning streak, and, and a back-to-back in Brooklyn is going to be really tough. But, but we will talk more about that later. But you want to get in and see the Magic this Sunday against the Charlotte Hornets. Welcome back, Steve Clifford, with open arms. And you shouldn't have to worry about where you're buying tickets to that event. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can get and see your view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. All in prices are shown up front, so you know your total uh, before you before you get in. You do not, you know, there's no hidden fees or anything like that. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again. Terms apply. Create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA. That's L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're gonna. I'm gonna get into when we get to the box score. We'll talk more about the play uh, in season tournament implications. Those are interesting. We'll spend more time on that on Tuesday's episode of Locked On Magic. So we will get to what this game means in the bigger picture, but. Every time we tried to get the players to talk a little bit about what this game meant or or what kind of the bigger picture lessons of a win like this was, and we spoke to Paolo and Mo after the game, they kind of brushed those off. I mean, kudos to them. This is, you know, a big win, but it's one of 82. You know, let the fans revel in it. This team, you know, gets tomorrow off, but they they get to or Saturday off, but they they got to get ready for another game Sunday. They're only as good as your last game. If Orlando loses Sunday, we're going to be in here panicking and, and and doing all that again. Um, we'll talk about some coaching decisions Jamal Mosley made in our box score section because he made some interesting and fun coaching decisions that that worked out. Some one didn't, but a lot of it did. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. But they didn't, you know. What, what, what struck me, because, A, you know, the Magic have beaten the Celtics plenty of times, but what struck me talking to Mo and Paolo after the game was there's no feeling of congratulations for being 11-5. and five. And there shouldn't be. But when the Magic won six straight last year, last December, this team was excited. You know, you could feel as a big weight lifted off their shoulders to break a nine-game losing streak, to go on a little bit of a run and, and get that feeling of winning. Honestly, what's impressive about the Magic and their demeanor right now is it all just feels normal. It isn't, 
It will be. Maybe it is now. But it just feels normal to them. That, of course, we won. That's what we do. That's that's the job. That's That's what our purpose is right now. And so this win... It wasn't a. It was a statement win to the rest of the league that that this team is lively. It's never out of a game. It, you know, you think you might be able to rattle them because of their inexperience, but they rattle those cages right back. They don't back down from anybody, and and, that, and that's a big statement to make. But for the team, none of this is surprising, and that honestly might be the bigger statement that this group is making. The bigger hint that. This isn't just a really good week or the team's got really good vibes. That this is something that's real and permanent about how the rest of the season's going to go. Now, they're going to lose a game. They're going to go through a little losing stretch. That's going to happen. 82 games is a long time. You get tired. You know, injuries hit you at the wrong wrong point. We're not going to go 77 and 5 with a, I guess that would make that a 60 a 72 game win streak that's not gonna happen so we're gonna face adversity at some point this season but the magic are gonna approach that adversity the same way they're approaching the success mo wagner i thought had the best statement because remember he joined this team back in 2021 um end of the 2021 season played the last 10 games was brought back in so he you know he's been here for the whole jamal mosley experience and, you know, had to fight his way onto this roster too. Don't forget that. But he said, you know, nothing about, you know, nothing about this success is surprising. You know, we always knew we had the talent to succeed like this. And maybe we didn't have the seasoning or, or the experience. Maybe we needed to add some skill work. We always had the talent to do this. And the one thing that hasn't changed in now three seasons with Jamal Mosley is the work, is the effort behind the scenes, the focus and determination to be great. Yeah, the Magic maybe needed some time to learn how to put these pieces together and and to do it consistently, and and they probably still do. But the approach that this team has taken has been consistent year day-to-day, week-to-week, game-to-game, year-to-year. That's been the thing. And, you know, you, you hear everyone say process over results and, and you keep doing the right, you keep doing the same thing over and over again. Eventually, you're going to get the result that you desire. Process over results. You got to make sure you have the right process. But this is a group that has always had faith in itself. And the magic, rightly or wrongly, and then we debated that a ton during the offseason, have put a lot of faith in this group too. Jeff Weltman did not make many changes to the to the roster. They added the two draft picks. They signed Joe Ingles. And it got a lot of criticism. And then there's maybe still some criticism to have for it. We're, we're going to get tested a lot when this team makes the playoffs. But they know, but they knew, they know each other and they know the kind of people in that locker room. And they know how hard they all work and how that work is being directed in the right place. This magic team works, you know, works, they work. You can see it on the floor, you know, that they, they play with the ferocity and intensity of the heart and hustle team. I'm not afraid to say that. And they have a no disrespect to that 1999, 2000 team. We love that team to death. This team has significantly more talent than that team. Effort goes a long way. And that's always been at the heart of who this team is. Now they have the skill. Now they have the confidence. Now they have the know-how to actually win these games. The statement that, you know, again, the Magic got a big win today. They got a humongous win. We're going to be talking, you know. Now, I don't know if this is a turning point for them, but... This team is rolling in confidence right now. And that confidence isn't bravado. It isn't thinking they are better than everyone. Now, Paolo said uh, about the Brooklyn game, they didn't 
maybe treat that game with the respect it deserved, you know, knowing that was an in-season tournament game and they kind of gave it away. And honestly, that Brooklyn game is the worst game they played all year. You know, they, they lost to the Mavericks the way they lost to the Mavericks. They lost to the Clippers the way they lost to the Clippers. That Brooklyn game, you could kind of tell they weren't all in, all in on it or they weren't all there, especially defensively from the start. They haven't lost since then. And that's a kind of responsibility and maturity that you don't see from a team like the Magic. A team that is the fourth youngest team in the league, I think. You know, one of the youngest teams in the league. A, a, a team that has not won consistently. Yeah, they went 29 and 28 the last 57 games last year, but they haven't won like this. They they haven't gone into every game thinking we can win this game, even if we even if we don't play a good first quarter. Even if we mess up, you know, I'm not here to say the Magic's margin for error is like wide, wide open, but they don't have to be perfect to win anymore. And and they don't have to be perfect to win a game like this. That's a credit to how Jamal Mosley's prepared them. That's a credit to their maturity, to their poise, to their seriousness. That is a credit to the work they have put in to be ready. The work that they have put in to make a difference, to be factors at this stage. This Magic team has put the work in to make these games matter and put the work in to to, to make their statement to the rest of the league, knowing full well that the only, only statement that matters to them is the work that they put in together. This is this is a special team. This, this has been a special start to the season. And there is very little reason to think it's not going to continue. When we come back, we will chat, go through the final box score, some interesting decisions Jamal Mosley made and how the Magic took down the Boston Celtics. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at FanDuel, the NFL season well underway. We got those nice Thursday games. The Dolphins with the big win, uh, a big win uh, on Friday. Sunday, we'll see the Jaguars. We'll see the Bucks. If you want to get in on the NFL action, you got to check out FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, guys. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get your NFL season going right. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Before I forget... Make sure you check out the Locked On 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel today. The Orlando Magic defeat the Boston Celtics 113-96, a game that was as thrilling as and exciting as that score sounds. Just a, a really impressive and strong showing from the Orlando Magic. And I would not call this their best game of the season, but that second half was about as good as they played all year. Um, just again, the first half, a lot of turnovers early. They had eight of their 18 turnovers in the first half. They were really, really sloppy. They, 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 you know, yeah, Paolo Bancaro even said they were kind of overanalyzing the defense. They really didn't know how to attack it. Boston switches so much and so well. The Magic tried targeting. They kind of got targeting switches. And again, Boston is just so big with Porzingis and Horford in there with, with Holiday out. Um, the Magic got bogged down and, and they made really bad passes. Celtics did a good job crowding them. You know, Orlando had to make some shots to, to, to loosen that up. And, and again, that's something that is continuing to happen. And, and some of these teams got to figure out and be aggressive attacking. I think that's. I think they slow the game down a little bit too much. Um, there's there's a happy medium between Jalen Suggs' pace and, and slowing down too much. If the Magic got to find um, second quarter, the Magic really did well to fight back. They got it to forty to forty. 
And then I think they gave up a 16 to eight run to close the quarter. Um, a lot of just really bad shot decisions, some bad fouls, a technical foul on Joe Ingles, a missed free throw here and there, like just a really poor close to the second quarter, the, you know, the kind of thing that I expected to be talking about at the end of the game. Um, you know, I mentioned, uh, I know I mentioned on my Patreon page how the Magic had a really bad close to the third quarter against the Nuggets and really felt like they might have given that game away. Um, you know, this game, end of the second quarter, going down by eight when it really should have been a one or two possession game. That kind of stuff hurts. And, and I would continue to point that out as like, okay, this is an area where the team has to get better, maintain their focus for 48 minutes. I mean, again, you just can't have these miscues. But Orlando, to their credit, came out, start of the third quarter, ripping, raring to go. Like they were not stopping. Uh, you know, I think they gave up a point early in the third quarter. And then from there, it was all magic the rest of the game. Like it was just, it, they they did not stop. And and they kept attacking and they found the, gra- the gap. They found the crease. They found their groove. And the game was played at the magic's pace the rest of the way. They attacked the glass. They drew one to the ball. They got offensive rebounds. They made threes. They got stops, deflection, steals, turnovers. Like it was, it was just excellent basketball. It was Orlando Magic basketball, to be perfectly honest. Like that's that's how the Magic want to play. They want to get deflections, disrupt your offense, get some steals, get out in transition, play at their pace, find mismatches, break you down, create holes to attack the offensive glass. Like they want to live in the paint. And so you know, you look at the markers that we usually look at to determine whether the Magic won a game. Orlando won points in the paint, sixty to forty. Like. That's big. And in the second half alone, let me pull, pull up my second half box score here. Uh, in the second half alone, it was 60 to 40 for the game. In the second half, it was uh, 36 to 12. Like that's that's magic basketball. Um, they got to the line for 22 free throws. They gave up 37. That That's not magic basketball. Boston benefited from the whistle a lot. Um, you, you felt like that might keep Boston in the game. But Orlando, just they kept attacking. They kept trying to get to the line, even though they didn't get to the line very much in the first half. They got to the line, made their impact there, made their free, made their free throws, 16 for 22 is okay, um, uh, did well there. They got 13 offensive rebounds to Boston's four, and they had 21 second chance points to Boston's eight. Again, these are the things the Magic do to win games. And, you know, offensively, like, yes, we know this half-court offense is going to struggle. Um, But if they don't turn the ball over because they're so good at getting to the foul line and because they're so good at getting offensive rebounds, as long as they are getting a shot up, you know, again, Orlando shot 50.6% for the game, Boston shot 40.8%. So it's not terrible, but as long as Orlando gets a shot up, they have a chance to score. And, you know, if you think of it, think of, think of it this way, Um, you know, let's, let's think of it this way. The Orlando magic have an offensive rebound rate of about 32%. Um, So, you know, this game, 13 of 40, um, 13 out of 40 is not doing math. I, I was told there'd be no math. Um, you know, I'll, I mean, let me, let me pull on, pull on my calculator, 13 of 40 magic at a 32 and a half percent offensive rebound rate in this game. Um, so let's round up one out of every three shot. The magic take is an offensive rebound. They're going to offensive rebound it. Um, if they're scoring, uh, 21 points on 13 offensive rebounds, they're seven for 10. And they're scoring on 70% of 13 offensive rebounds, you know, 70% of those, those chances, you know, that's again, two out of every three offensive rebounds they get, they're going to score. So here you, so, so you do the math there. So one out of every three shots total, the magic put up as an offensive rebound. Let's give, let's, let's say, you know, they make 50%, you know, again, that's one out of every two. How many is that leaving for the other team to get a defensive rebound? You know, again, let's say the Magic shoot 40%, 45%, you know, whatever. Um, the, the formula for the Magic to score is pretty good if you think about it. I may have to do some more, you know, I, I'm not a math guy, but maybe I need to do some math on that. The formula for the Magic to score is pretty good as long as they don't turn the ball over, as long as they're not giving away those possessions. Because again, you think of it, again, you think of it this way, for every three field goal attempts the Magic take, they get a free throw. They average about a 32% free throw rate, too. That's a lot of one out of threes. I think we got more than three one out of threes there. So the point being, if the Magic get a shot up, something good's going to happen. <laughs> they're either going to make the shot, they're going to get to the foul line, or they're going to re- they're going to rebound it, or the other team's going to rebound it. And... You know, so there's four outcomes. There's four possible outcomes. Make the shot, 
offensive rebound, get to the foul line, defensive rebound. Um, they do these two things. They do two of those things, one out of every three times. They score, you know, again, like the numbers seem to add up that as long as the Magic get a shot, they'll generally be fine. Honestly, like one of the reasons they lost to Dallas is they didn't rebound well. So that's just, you know, someone who's smarter at math, tell me the percentages, tell me the probabilities. Um, but that gives you an idea of why this Magic offense kind of works. Doesn't really work, but kind of works. Um, just something just something to think about. Uh, our sponsor, TBD Player of the Day, is Bo Wagner. 27 points, 9 for 13 shooting, 8 for 9 from the foul line. Uh, just 13, again, had 13 of his 27 in the fourth quarter. Had I think he had a string of like seven or eight straight points. And, and again, Missoula maybe backhanded complimenting him, but said a lot of those are just putbacks, kind of dump offs. You know, Mo Wagner, I'll, you know, I don't even think it was backhanded compliment. Mo Wagner was asked about being more aggressive offensively. And he just, just kind of looked at, at the reporter who asked the question, like kind of a fuddle, was just like, I'm just rolling to the basket. You know, they, they went with Cole Anthony. He fed me the ball. I made, I made the layup. It's, it's not, it's not super complicated. And look, the way Mo scores isn't super complicated. He does have some nice post moves. He does have great touch around the basket. He had a fantastic game. I, I don't think it's just putbacks and, and all and layups and stuff like that. He worked for those baskets, but he put himself in a position to score, including getting on the offensive glass and just doing so many things like Mo Wagner's had, an incredible season. I think he and Cole Anthony should be up for six man of the year at this point. They've both been outstanding. And, and, and with that, you know, Cole Anthony, 16 points, six for 17 shooting, shot a little much, six assists, a lot of that to Mo Wagner, two steals, one block. Like Cole Anthony was really good, really active, getting in the paint, drawing defenders to him, making plays, just, just a fantastic game from him. To the starters, Paolo Bancaro, 23 points, 10 for 16 shooting, two for six from three. Starting to shoot a little bit more threes. He's a lot more confident with his three-point shot. I have no problem with that. He is a 42, you know, he ended the game as like a 42% three-point shooter. Let him let him cook for now. Uh, you know, he, he's taking as long as he's taking good shots, maybe settled for a few here and there. Seven rebounds, five assists. Good to see the assists back up. Three turnovers still. Turnovers are the big problem for him this year. It's something he's just that's part of the learning process. We're gonna live with that. Um, but Paolo made a lot of really good decisions. Boston, when they were switching, you know, Paolo started matchup hunting a little bit, trying to isolate a little bit too much. There are a few times when he got like Sam Hauser or Peyton Pritchard on him, and I wanted him to like give the ball away, dive down to the post, get the ball back, and, and do do a post up. I think the Magic, uh, the Magic, I think have to do a better job at giving him those opportunities. I, I think right now he is, um, right now he is a little too reliant on trying to beat guys off the dribble. Rather than fo- rather than trying to get the ball, you know, with his pivot foot down, able to kind of move, kind of move around a little bit more. So, so I think I think there's there's still that's more of a Mosley thing. That's more of a play design thing. But again, he's making smart passes. He's making those plays. Like I'm not gonna, you know, it's all good for him in the end. And right now, he's just stepping into his jumper so confidently. Like he is just, you know, if you give him an inch of space and allow him to take that step into his jumper, it's going in. Um, that jumper has come a long way. He's shooting very confidently right now. And there'll probably be a slump coming at some point. I think his numbers are are definitely where they will ultimately be, but not where he probably is right now. Um, so, but he is, he's playing very, very well right now and doing the right things for this team. Franz Wagner, 17 points, eight for 17 shooting, just one for six from three. The three point shot continues to be a bit of a struggle. Eight rebounds, though, six assists. I love seeing those rebounds up. I, I thought that was an area where, where Franz could get a lot better. Orlando, wants to rebound a little bit more uh, gang rebounding because they get they, their big switch out a lot. Um, you know, they have great rebounding guards. Everyone needs to be able to rip it and go. Um, so seeing Franz get a bunch of rebounds is really good. The three-point shooting has been a big concern this year. His shot looks a little flat at times, but look, when Franz goes on a scoring binge and a scoring run, he is as impressive as anyone else. He was really big in the fourth quarter, attacking Luke Cornette, just getting him, getting isolating him at the top of the key, beating him off the dribble, getting his shoulders past him, using his body to protect layups, making layups, like really great stuff from Franz Wagner throughout the game. You know, settled a few times, went for the step back a few times when the shot clock was winding down. But generally when he was trying to get to the basket, he he made shots and, and again, just a steady drumbeat for this team. Uh, you know, he was really aggressive trying to attack the basket. And I, I really, really like seeing that. Um, last player of note, Jalen Suggs, 10 points, three for eight shooting, three for four from deep, hit a big three late in the game, four rebounds for him. 
Um, a mixed game for him, a tough matchup for him. You know, he got the call on Jalen Brown and on Jason Tatum at various points in the game, especially when it's matched with Tatum. I thought he defended him well, but that's where his that he was at a little bit of a size disadvantage. Um, you know, he got into guys, he he got he forced a technical foul on Jalen Brown because he defended him so well, he locked him up so well. Um, but Got caught a little bit playing. You know, he's going to have to learn how to play bigger defenders at some point to be a true defensive player of the year candidate. Yeah, look, he's still played great defense, but Jalen Suggs just gives his team so much energy. Like, you know, just sticking his tongue out. Like he's, he's, he's into every, every moment. Um, A couple of rotation decisions before we close up shop and, and talk about the in-season tournament stuff. Um, A couple of rotation decisions Um, to note. Uh, I'm not looking to score that. I just look back at, Um, uh, but uh, Anthony Black only played 614 in this game, really only played that opening stint in the first quarter. Um, Anthony Black, the pumpkin, uh, the, the carriage is starting to turn back into a pumpkin when it comes to Anthony Black. Uh, I think that he, uh, I think that he generally, you know, he's starting to look like a rookie. Like, look, the defense is still there. He played some great defense. There is a lack of aggression offensively that he is shown that I think is starting to hurt the team now that the three point shot is going down. And frankly, there was at least one, there's definitely one, maybe two or three times where it looked like uh, teammates were not actively willing to pass to him, you know, uh, on a swing swing, you know, the ball's rotating around the perimeter. It, there were a few times where it just felt like the team didn't want to pass to him where he was clearly the next pass, clearly the next guy. And they didn't trust him to take the shot, make the right decision. And that, you know, I don't think it's active. I think it's subconscious, subconscious. And so, you know, it's not like AB's someone you give up on. He's come a long way. He's still got a long way to go offensively. His defense, they trust him completely. He is a great defender. Um, but this game, the moment felt a little big for him. And so in the second half, Orlando started Gary Harris. It's not like Gary Harris had a crazy good game, one for three shooting. Um, but he's just solid. They know what, you know what you're getting. He's not going to be afraid to shoot if the ball swings to him. He's not going to demand a lot of shots. Um, you know, magic have to find ways to get him more shots. Um, but they started Gary Harris. They brought Caleb Houston off the bench in the second half. And so Caleb Houston played 846 in this game, did not get a shot up, but just played fantastic defense. Um, you know, and again, and not that Anthony black doesn't play fantastic defense, but Caleb is just a much more comfortable shooter, a much bigger threat as a shooter. Not that teams are afraid of him shooting quite yet because, you know, he's still developing his reputation in the league, but Caleb Houston played some really, really strong minutes. Deserves the mention here. Um, you know, gave them, had a really big deflection and steal for a bat that, that turned into a basket for Orlando. Stuff that isn't going to show up necessarily in the stat sheet. He played really well. Great call by Jamal Mosley. Again, worked out. Worked out. Caleb Houston's a guy that that can play and, and play those spot minutes. And, and you know, again, there, there are a few times a few games where he is being targeted, but he he stepped up to the plate in this game for sure. The other interesting lineups wrinkle that we saw with Goga Batadze in foul trouble uh, to end the second quarter, um, Orlando did run a lineup with Jonathan Isaac, Paolo Bancaro, and Franz Wagner all on the floor together with uh, essentially Paolo playing the center. Um, I, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was all three, but there was a lineup late in the game, late in the first half where Paolo was the center, where they didn't have Mo Wagner on the floor. Goga Batadze was in foul trouble. Um, so they played a kind of quirkier lineup. Um, and it had its moments where it worked. Um, you know, uh, Boston is a big team. You know, they run they run Kristaps Porzingis and Al Horford together a lot. They ran Cornette uh, out there a lot. You know, Jalen Brown's playing the two. Jason Tatum's playing the three. This is a big team, one of the few teams that can really outsize the Orlando Magic. Um, and so Orlando went small and it was an interesting little push and pull. I don't think the magic won those minutes, but I do think that that is an experiment worth revisiting. And, and, and we're starting to see some of these experimental lineups. Isaac played some five, you know, Isaac's played some five late in the game. He played some five late in the game against the bulls, played some five late in the game against the nuggets Did not work against Denver and Nikola Jokic. Um, I, I do, I, I do like that. We're beginning to, beginning to see these experiments happening Maybe some of it is by necessity because of foul trouble, but there is at least a little bit of trust to, to try, you know, some of these more versatile and funkier lineups that the Magic like to do. I mean, Jalen Suggs is, gonna play, has, is playing a little bit more point guard than I think they want him to be without Markel Fultz out there, but that enables you to go out and put a Joe Ingles or Gary Harris out there. And look, Joe Ingles is functionally the point guard of that second unit 
with Cole Anthony playing off the ball. So, you know, this team is starting to experiment a little bit and they're doing it and they're still winning. So I, I think that's, that's an important point to make too. Um, the versatility of this roster is supposed to be a strength. That's going to be valuable when we get to April. We're always thinking about April. And so it's just something to consider. Now, I'm already at 40 minutes. I'm already pretty long here. Um, let's talk in-season tournament. So we're going to dive deeper into the scenarios. Games are still going on. I'm watch- I've am i got the Heat-Knicks game on behind me. The Heat are currently up 15. They get 13 on the Knicks. That's bad for the Magic. Um, but but Orlando did the job. You know, winning by 17. They get to 3-1. and one. They have a plus 22 Point differential that puts them in first in in the in the group um, with with no undefeated teams left. But the Magic are three and one. The Celtics are two and one. The Nets are two and one. Um, the simplest way to explain things: the Magic do not control their own destiny. They are done. They're done. There's no game to play. You know they 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 they, they can't win it in. Um, they are done. They need some results to go their way. A Brooklyn loss on Tuesday. Brooklyn plays uh, Toronto in Brooklyn. Um, a Brooklyn, if Toronto beats Brooklyn on Tuesday, the Magic win Group C. It's that simple. If Brooklyn beats Toronto on Tuesday, then the Magic need the Boston Celtics to win to ensure a three-way tie. From there, the math gets complicated. Um, if I'm remembering my math correctly, um, Boston is now even. So Orlando advances. Orlando wins Group C if the Boston Celtics win by fewer than 23 points and the Brooklyn Nets win by fewer than 13 points. Um, Because I think if the Magic and Nets tie the point differential, I think the Nets advance because they have the head-to-head tiebreaker um, with with Orlando. I think they just have to eliminate Boston. Orlando essentially either needs a three-way tie or for Brooklyn to lose. Um, Orlando put themselves in a very good position. Big home wins over Toronto. Big home win over Boston. This was a dream way to finish the end season tournament. We'll talk more about what this end season tournament means on Tuesday's episode of Locked On Magic. Um, so I don't want to jump the gun too much. We'll talk about wild card scenarios as well once the Friday games are done. Um, but Orlando is in a very good spot to advance in the end season tournament, reach the quarterfinals, play a single elimination game. But they still need some things to happen and break in their favor. And that's not guaranteed. So we can't we can't guarantee that they're that they're there, but they have done as much as they can do. They've done a very good job putting themselves in a position to advance in this tournament. So very, very exciting stuff. And, and again, a uh, shout out to the shout out to Magic fans. Like I was like, this week at the Amway Center was awesome. Very intense games, very loud crowds. Everyone's buying in and believing in this team. It it it, it made, you know. The team will tell you that it matters. It does matter. The energy in the building is awesome. It is honestly, honestly, the energy in the Amway Center this week is the best I have ever felt it at the Amway Center. Um, Except for maybe the 2019 playoffs. That was more cathartic. This feels very, very real. I think everyone sees how real this can be. Um, This was a statement game. It's going to bring more people onto the bandwagon. It's going to get some more attention, some more pressure, some more raised expectations from us externally. Um, you got to bring the energy as much for the, you know, the same challenge for the magic. I'm going to make the same challenge to to magic fans, bring the same energy for the Hornets that you bring for the Celtics. I mean, you got to manufacture some energy somehow. Got to get those wins. You can't, you can't lose to the Hornets and the wizards here this week. um, If, if you want to go where you ultimately want to go, but you know, I challenge you guys back on Tuesday to bring the energy this week. Y'all did it. Um, I sat here in August and said, let's treat the seven games for the mat for the Magic's in-season tournament uh, group play games, like a mini playoff series, they went six and one in those games. Like I am just astonished. Like I thought we'd be struggling to get a four and three record, and even if they did advance, I would have been very very happy. They went six and one over these last seven games with a six game win streak. Just just incredible stuff. So proud of this team, and so excited to see how they continue to develop because I know that's what they're focused on as much as anything else. How they can get even better, and, and that's honestly the, that's the statement they made to themselves as much as a statement they made to the world. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Match. Of course, find me on Twitter at R underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, which you're tuning in to Himalaya, Google, Spotify, Odyssey, and also be safe on the download podcast to your podcast enable listening device related to something Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. Our new look is live. You can check that out today at orlandomagicdaily.com. And don't forget to check out my Patreon page, 
the Orlando Magic Hub, patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. And of course, thank you all for your support. I ran into a lot of people. Um, I was running around the concourse area, uh, seeing family members that were in town for the game, just visiting them at halftime. Ran into so many of you guys um, who said, who came up to me and said, hey, I listen to your podcast. Love the work that you do. Thank you for doing it. Keep up the great work. Asking me questions about the team. I appreciate all of you guys that did that. Sorry if I, I, I did quite, you know, uh, you know, I'm modest. I don't like to talk a lot about myself, but I, I do appreciate everyone who came up to me. I hope everyone had a very happy Thanksgiving. That matters to me too. Um, great holiday weekend. Uh, and of course, we're still, we're still, we still got plenty of work to do here. A lot of basketball left to play. So until next time, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Phil Frost Mike. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.